First Peter 1, 24. First Peter 1, 24, we read carefully, you can see that for all the flesh, flesh, huh? they are all flesh, they are flesh and blood. It's like grass. We are like grass. And all the glory, like the flower of the grass. Can you imagine? Can you uh, picture yourself? The glory? How splendid, how handsome, how beautiful we are? Is the flower of the grass. The grass withers. The flower fall off. This is how life is. The grass can die. And the glory also go away. That's right. So we need to take care of the things of our life. But the word of God abides forever. The word of God. There's something that abides forever. It's the word of God. See? My word shall not pass away. Everything will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The word of God abides forever. It lives forever. Because the word of God is the is the two ages of He can cut us, he can help us, he can also judge us. That's what do not believe. Uh, help us, he also will judge us. That's why John chapter 12, verse 28 says, He that reject me and receive not my words, and one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. God is going to use the standard of the word to judge us on the last day. So we need to know what is the word. The word is his will. He says, Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy word. We have to sanctify ourselves through the word. And the word we will know. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. We need to have the word to free us. Is the word of God in you? It is a flower of the grass that will be weeded away. It will fall off. There's an enemy. Death is the man's last enemy. Remember? First Corinthians chapter 15, we read just now the scripture. Verse 26. He must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Who must reign? Christ. Christ is reigning today until death is no more. Until death in the world is no more. Then he will, verse 27, he has give back. He will for he has put all things in subjection under Christ's feet. God has put all things. But he says all things are put in subjection. It is evident that he is accepted to put all things in subjection to him. Verse 38. And when all things are subjected to him, then the Son will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, that God may be all in all. He will surrender back to God, the rule. Huh? After he has Abolish all rule and authority and power. Verse 24. That's right. All rule and power, all the worldly powers that he has conquered. And the last enemy that shall be conquered is death. That is the enemy. It's man's last enemy. Where is this death actually started? It started when man, the first man, Adam, 
sin against God. Then, sin, the wages of sin is death. That's where that's coming. The man was enjoying himself in the Garden of Eden. They were enjoying it. They were eating the fruit. They were having a good time. Then, they fell into temptation. Satan came and tempted them. And they yielded to temptation. And they died. Because they fell from faith. And no more faithful. They have to pay the death penalty. So because of that, man has to die. Death. But what is it that separate man? It's actually sin. Sin. The wages of sin is death. It's the sin that prevents us to go back to God. See, it is a sin. God does not love sin, but he loves the sinner. In the same way, we should emphasize that we love sinners, but we do not love the sin in death, in Christ. We must hate sin. We must hate sin. Because it's a sin that separates us from God. It's a separation. It causes us the death. See? Remember what Isaiah says? It is not God's hand is too short, cannot reach us. It's not God's ear too heavy, cannot hear us. It is your sins that separate between you and your God. That's right. There are five facts we all have to face. Number one. We must live. We must live. Everybody has to live. And when we live, we live for ourselves or for the law. We have a choice. We need to live for the law, not for ourselves. We should not be selfish. In Romans chapter 14, verse 7 and 8 is a verse to encourage us to live for God. Live for God. For one not one of us lives for himself, and not one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. We should live for the Lord. That's right. We must die. We must die in the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Then we will be raised. We must be raised. John 5, verse 28 and 29. There's a resurrection of life. There's a resurrection of judgment. We will all be raised. So this is the facts we have to face. We must live. We, we must die. We also will be raised. Number four, we must stand in judgment. We will be judged. We will be judged. We must stand in judgment. And we must live eternally somewhere. We must live eternally somewhere. Matthew chapter 25 verse 46. The righteous to life eternal and the rest into hell life. That's right. Where are we? The question comes back again. Why must man die? It's because of the consequence of sin. That's right. We need to take away this sin. 